Okay, so one of the last reasons why I chose to flip my classroom had to do with both of those combined. Um, I was running out of time to do things, and I was looking for ways to build better relationship with my students, parents, and administration. So all that kind of comes together to, to get us to the creation and publication part of a flipped classroom. So obviously, I can't draw all these, and I, and I drew on the uh, wise inspiration of Kathy Schrock to pull in some of her examples. But if we look at, Bl if we look at Bloom's uh, revised taxonomy, we obviously want to be at the top in the creating and evaluating. And we spend a lot of time down here in the remembering and understanding. We all know that, right? Well, I was really struggling with ways to figure out how to spend my time in the classroom up here. I wanted my kids creating. I wanted my kids producing. I wanted my kids reflecting. I wanted my kids evaluating. I wanted my kids doing all that. But to be honest with you, they needed to have a working understanding of the content, the curriculum I was responsible for teaching, in order to be able to do that. So the flipped classroom opened this door, and I, and I pull in these examples only because I love the way they're modeled here. And being a tech guy, I have to pull in SAMR as well um, as ways to integrate those different things. But student outcomes are important, and if you link that to Bloom's taxonomy, creation and publication is one of the number one reasons why I look to flip my classroom. Without flipping my classroom, I wouldn't have had the time to get to these higher level thinking activities in my classroom. And in social studies, that's really important because we're trying to create uh, citizens in our world that are going to go out and be responsible and contribute to society. And so I really valued what this brought to my classroom, and that's one of the main reasons why I chose to flip it.